Greetings whiskey lovers. I just wanted to give you a little introduction to the video that I'm about to present here. Um, this is from my trip up to the 2012 Chicago Whiskey Fest, but it also includes footage from the uh, Binnie's World of Whiskeys event that was held the day before. And uh, at that event I got to talk to Hunter Siobhan, who is one of the uh, members of the Willett family, and uh, he told me about the history of the distillery and especially about what has been going on for the last several, seven years when they have been uh, re-establishing the distillery. Um, it was originally established in 1935 by Thompson Willett and in the uh, 1980s it was closed and the stocks uh, were sold off. A few years after that um, a gentleman named um, Even Kulzveen, which is also a member of the Willett family um, and uh, lived in Norway, came to the U.S. and bought the Willett property and also set up an independent uh, bottlers company um, which is known as Kentucky Bourbon Distillers and still exists and still is bottling uh, many uh, brands that you may see um, Johnny Drum, uh, Rowan's Creek, uh, Kentucky Vintage and then they also bo bottle under the um, Willett family, the Willett Estate Bottlings. Um, rumor has it that they buy most of their whiskey from Heaven Hill, but uh, the exciting thing is that um, earlier this year the uh, renovation of their distillery was completed and they started making new bourbon and new rye and uh, they did their uh, first casking of the new make distillate in January on the birthday of Thompson Willett. So I think even though the sound is a little hard to, to uh, get, get through because it's kind of noisy, uh, it's interesting to, to hear what Hunter had to say. And then the uh, rest of the video is um, mainly devoted to the Whiskey Fest itself. And then I've uh, posted on both of them some of the favorites from the trip. Um, it's my first time working with a new camera, so some of the focus uh, isn't so great. But if you can uh, forgive that, I think you'll you'll find this interesting. All right, hope you enjoy. Sanja.
daughter Siobhan with the uh, uh, Kentucky Bourbon Distillers, uh, i.e. Willett Distillery, and uh, we've been working very hard about the last seven some odd years on restoring the family distillery. And uh, I think if we knew how much work it was going to be seven years ago, I don't know if we would have started. But uh, anyway, about seven years ago we did start, and uh, the shell, the structure of the main distillery building is the same, but aesthetically uh, everything else has been you know, redone. Uh, 55 foot beer still. Um, we have a really very unique 1,200 gallon capacity copper pot still, Vindham Copper, the Louisville, Kentucky did for us. They do some of the very best copper pot stills in the country. Um, what we're doing right now is we're not utilizing the doubler right now. We're working out a few issues there. So, what we're doing is we're taking our uh, corn, rye, malted barley uh, mash bill, and it's 72% corn on the primary bourbon mash bill, 72% corn, it's 13% on the rye, 15% on the malted barley. And that's a mash bill that dates back to when the previous regime ran, thing, ran things, and it actually dates back farther than that. Uh, it's an old bullet uh, recipe that dates back to, uh, I think, uh, two or three generations ago. Yeah. Three or four generations, I should say. Uh, and we're also doing some rye whiskey. Uh, we're doing about 75% bourbon production right now, 25% rye production. Uh, the rye mash bill is 51% rye and 35% corn, and it's 15% uh, on the malted barley. And uh, what we're doing right now, very unusual, is we're running the first run, the first distillate on that 55 foot beer still, nothing unusual about that. And then we're feeding it into the main distillery building. Like I said, we're not utilizing the double economy. Mm -hmm. Feeding it into the main distillery building where we're using the copper pot still uh, does the second run. And uh, we're really excited that the flavor of whiskey's coming off of it. And uh, we've currently got about four, four fermenters going. Right now we're utilizing the uh, one of the two mash tubs, a 3,000 gallon mash tub. We haven't gotten the 6,000 gallon mash tub going yet, but working out a few pump issues with that. And hopefully that will go online for the next two to four weeks. And hopefully within the next uh, you know, two, three months maybe, we'll be running to where we got all the fermenters going and we're kind of running, running on all cylinders, so to speak. So, so how, how, where we are right now. How soon do you anticipate that you'll be bottling some of your new distillate? You know, of course, once it comes off the still, it's clear in color, as you know, and, uh, and it smells a little bit like Cap'n Crunch, <laughs> clear in color, looks like yeah. water. Yeah. Nothing like the uh, bourbon inside the bottle. Right, so, right. Hard to say. Every month or so, you know, we've already looked at the whiskey inside those barrels twice now. We put it in storage January 27th. For the first time, it's Thompson's birthday. We thought that was an appropriate day to put the first barrels in the storage to honor him. And so, since January 27th, we've evaluated it a couple times and are really happy with the way it's progressing. But to answer your question, uh, we don't know yet. We'll be ready when it's ready. Could be two years, could be four. Yeah. That's one thing a lot of people are thinking, it's a misnomer, think we've got to wait four years. We decide we want to do a barrel strength, non chill filter product. And that stuff gets quite nice starting at two. So, maybe not as far as people, or as long as people might think. I'm trying to remember, I, I read some, this is maybe a couple of years ago, when you were just starting to re, redo the distillery. Was some of the old distilling equipment still there? Um, I, and usable, I should ask, I guess that also. Bin, the scale bins, some of the original scale bins, uh, outside of that, not really, no. The 55 foot beer still was purchased by Evan uh, years ago. The column still was done just about seven years ago from Vindman Hopper, so uh, not really. The warehouse was in the original warehouse. Okay, thanks. It was started in the early 50s. It was done exclusively for a gentleman out in uh, California, a wholesaler. My founder, my, my wife I worked with at the distillery, her and my brother-in-law, their grandfather was Thompson Willard. And uh, he started this whole thing right after Prohibition. My wife's grandfather, Thompson Willard. So well, let's go back to the 1600s. When my father-in-law, Evan, came in in the early 80s, he brought the land back from the ashes. And it was in Japan exclusively for about, about 15 years. And to this day, has a good following over there. Well, hello, greetings to the St. Louis bums. Here to you live in Chicago. My name is Steph Ridgeway. I'm the Highland Park brand manager, brand ambassador for the U.S. And so excited that I have the chance to say hello to you. And we're going to have to make arrangements to get you all to Chicago next year for Whiskey Fest. Have a great day. Slante.
John Hansel, and uh, welcome to Whiskey Fest. And um, un unfortunately, we're here, but you're not. So the next time, get your tickets early, come and join us. We're going to have a great time, and I hope to see you then. Cheers. Slange. <laughs> Ian McCallum, I'm the Master of Mobs of Morris and Bullmore, and I would just like to extend a huge thanks to the Bumbers of St. Louis. Keep drinking good whiskey. Slanger.